So after doing part one of Game Theory's Ultimate FNAF Timeline, I of course am so ready for part two, especially because this is all about the Afton era. You know what that means? Maybe I'll finally find out why he killed kids. It was not mentioned in the previous part, and it's a burning question of mine. I know he, I know he slaughtered children. I don't know why. So, are you excited? I am. <laughs> Hello Internet, welcome to Game Theory, and officially page 7 of the FNAF Timeline script. Last page, time I covered oh, the order. I was like, isn't this the second part? Why is it page 7? We talked about William Afton's childhood dream project of making a singing bear come to life. I actually already completely forgot about the singing bear thing. Onward to part two, where things are about to get dark in a hurry. Yes, give me the darkness. 1983, business was booming with two whole restaurant franchises running. It's still weird that this story starts with successful businesses. Together, William and Henry had been able to take the hybrid suit idea and make it into a Forgot how terrifying they the rabbit their was. new invention, the Springlock suit. And fittingly enough, it was symbolic of the partnership between these two men, a human suit as designed by William that could become a free I mean, Henry even the drawings which are meant to be like charitable towards how they look and being nice and cute that looks horrifying i don't it's, I, is it the teeth the evil eyes also why is the guy on the left kind of look like mark Plyle? but because it was still new tech with kinks to work out the rollout was limited restricted only to the fred bears family diner location oh not the other one he didn't have time to be a full-time parent so he designed a nanny cam system where cameras and speakers were hidden throughout the neighborhood as well as in his youngest son's favorite what toy, psychic friend fred bear oh god I mean, plushy fred bear. is he but since cameras like making his own horror movie he also left child care duties to his eldest son michael there was just one problem why is with that. Michael was far from the best babysitter. Why does Michael have a face like that? Why is he, why is he, it's like, why does he have an animatronic face? And Michael Afton, is he the security guard? No, you play as him in one of the games? Uh, the law keeps expanding. He tormented his younger brother by jump scaring him with a foxy mask. There you go. And constantly That's left why. him behind. William watched wow. all of it from his cameras. Kids would be kids. Tomorrow was another day. No. You're just gonna sit there watching your son torture your other son? Through Michael's mind. Why did he have to be the one to take care of this whining crybaby oh all the time? God. It just wasn't fair. Sorry, he's like calling his brother a crybaby, but like at the same time is just constantly scaring the shit out of him. Like, oh yeah, why is this baby crying all the time? All I'm doing is putting on an absolutely horrifying mask, jumping out and scaring him at any possible moment. He lives his life on edge because maybe he'll get the shit scared out of him at any possible second. What a little bitch. The ultimate prank. A prank that just so happened to be on this crying child's birthday. He and his friends- On the birthday? Brother ...and make him do the one thing that he was terrified of doing, getting close to the animatronics. Oh my God, these people are awful such an embarrassment to him his brother squirmed screamed kicked and fought but just, just as they were putting that small squirming boy up to fred bear's lips the mouth snapped shut the sensitive spring locks inside the body had been triggered by the boy's movements and they'd immediately clamped down we are only a couple minutes into this law video and already i just want to say what the fuck? so brother constantly scares the shit out of his younger brother and then as a prank and what a fun joyous prank it is taking him to his biggest fear and literally shoving him in its mouth fun the robot's mouth clamps does it does it kill him or just like horrifically injure him man william afton is gonna feel so so guilty being like my creation my robots killed my son the boy went limp but it was just a prank it was meant to be oh yeah fun. just a prank bro in the hospital and was immediately given an iv oh so he's alive he was filled the nightstand next to his hospital bed but the damage was too severe he couldn't recover as the younger brother's consciousness began to fade he could hear michael's last words a small and flimsy apology but his okay. father William, well this is getting very depressing their plush were a firm and committed promise to a dying son. You're wait, broken. wait, through the Fredbear plot. He, the father didn't even come to see him and like not even a video call. He talked essentially through a hand puppet to his dying child. His young son's heart flatlined as the boy faded into the inky unknown of the afterlife. Okay, so yep, kid just straight up died. Wear security wristbands to prevent anyone from getting outside without parental permission. Any kid who approached the exit without permission would have to answer to the security puppet. A what? On Why? That could fly How? On rails How did... How does that solve the safety issue 
of the jaw slam and shut. Oh yes, a child died on our property because they had their head inside the jaw of our robots and it snapped shut. You know what we're gonna do? Give all the kids a wristband so they can't leave the premises without a parent and also make sure we have the most goddamn horrifying puppet of all time on strings flying around to make it sure that even if they were able to leave, they wouldn't want to. How does that fix anything? Just makes a more horrifying destination. It was William's idea, inspired by Michael constantly leaving the restaurant without his brother. In the wake of Fred Bear's okay. spring lock failure, all the hybrid suits were getting retired, locked away at the nearby Freddy Fazbear location. Why did the Jaws even have the capacity to slam like that? William would eventually bury the boy's small body in a remote location out in the woods right alongside his drive into and out of work every day. Oh the death God. of this little boy this is so depressing. Spiraling. His wife, crippled with grief, was so distraught that all she could do was sit and watch TV, but his son Michael was far worse. Yeah, I mean, he killed his brother. The boy was so racked with guilt that he was convinced that he was being haunted by the ghost of his brother stuck inside the suit that took his life. Is that, though, exactly what's happening? Because there are souls in the Golden Freddy, right? And it would make sense that it would be the brother, whose name I don't think has even been mentioned. What's the brother's name? Am I crazy? Did I miss that? It's three toed feet digging into the wet earth. The words, it's oh me, God. ringing through Michael's ear. Oh, and Golden Freddy, I think at least in the first game. Is it the poster that says, it's me? Or the, the pop-up? Cool, hate that. Sufficiently terrifying. Check the gravesite and ensure that his brother was still there. He goes, not William even to visit, just to check. Be like, is the body still there? Juniors, the local bar wasn't far from his son's gravesite. He found himself going there more and more frequently, spending longer and longer time there. I mean, this is understandable. Bar gave him a place to think, to remember, to reflect and stew. And to forget, Henry right? Stolen his idea for an animal themed restaurant. How they'd cut his character out of the cartoon when everyone else was there. How Henry had humiliated him by buying him out of bankruptcy. And now, now there was his son. Henry had taken his oh son. Oh my God, just robotic. seeing that again also is so sad. William ordered one more drink, but it was one too many. The bar turned him out and told him to go home. But William didn't go home. Drunk and angry, William raced back to the restaurant to give Henry a piece of his oh mind. God. Only to find someone like, else waiting. Henry's gonna, daughter, Charlie, um, locked outside of the... I was gonna be like, oh, is he gonna kill someone out of vengeance? And I was immediately like, was it Henry Emily? But then I thought, no. Surely, Henry has a kid. Charlotte Emily. Is he gonna kill her out of revenge or something? Thinking that Henry is responsible for all of this, so to get back at you, I'ma kill your daughter? Hmm, ill-advised. The official stance here at the Matthew McKenna YouTube channel is don't kill children. Controversial, but someone needs to take a stand and that's gonna be me. But then Afton got an idea, a beautifully awful idea. A beautifully awful this idea. This was his chance to get back at the man that had humiliated him. Yeah, he's, is he gonna kill her? He had killed his business. And now Henry's robotic suit had killed his son. It was oh my time God, for William. Bro, this is a leap. Of his own. Let Henry feel what it's like to have something you love get ripped away. While parties continued inside the walls of the pizzeria, William attacked Charlie. Wait, people are still in there? He just killed her outside the restaurant while people are there? He would make Henry hurt like he hurts. <laughs> and in that moment, William became a killer. He dropped Charlie's lifeless body and drove home. How did he, how did he even kill her? I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. I don't want to know, but just to get this straight, he's angry at his business partner because in his mind, he stole his business and his robotics were responsible for killing his son. So in retaliation, he brutally murders his business partner's daughter in an alley outside of the restaurant. Confront his family problems later that night, appalled, but also a little excited by what he had just done. What? So now that he got a Taste of it, he keeps going. In the weeks that followed, Fred Bear's family diner would close for good. Two high profile Why? deaths oh, in the restaurant with two sense. grieving owners in such a short period of time. But like, only one of them was related to the restaurant. The other could have just been for any reason. Besides, Freddy Fazbear's was still open and it was the newer restaurant anyway. All the equipment- Oh, the diner, so only the other one closed. The suits and security puppet would get retired to that location and there they would sit for two uneventful years. I would hate to walk into a storage room and just see those animatronics and that puppet. But I, oh my God. There would be a Matthew-shaped hole in the wall. Afton kept a low profile and buried himself in work and research, quickly reaching Henry's level of engineering and even surpassing him. And while Henry slowed down to grieve, Afton Yeah, is he still no doing he stuff like Henry? Company. Afton Robotics for all those pet projects that were a little bit too experimental for the regular operations of the pizzeria. The first of these experimental projects was a secret workshop under his house, a veritable bunker. How does he manage to just make that happen under his house? Nine, eight, 
3, a passcode that served as a constant reminder of why the cameras were so important, why he was down there in the first place. This was all to fulfill the promise that he had made to his son, right? I will put you back together. This was for him. All for him, right? What's the... Why does he, why is he monitoring everything with cameras now? But cameras weren't enough. He needed to solve the runaway Michael problem. He had to keep him what? in the house. He couldn't have another one of his kids wind up dead inside of an animatronic suit. So why not run a little what? experiment? On <sighs> so he wanted to stop Michael like sneaking out of the house or whatever. And I guess that's understandable, but specifically so that he doesn't get killed in an animatronic suit as well. Wouldn't he just not shove his head in an animatronic after watching his brother die like that? I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't shove my head in an animatronic anyway. And I definitely wouldn't shove someone else's head into an animatronic, especially if they were screaming and crying and begging me not to. Afton to start learning more about life, robots, the human mind, and what a fallible machine we as humans were. Our reality is so easy to manipulate with a few sensory deceptions. That's deceptions like sound. With just a few sounds, he had discovered that he could alter a person's vision. He could transform blank, what? smooth, plastic robots into lumbering, twisted nightmares. Nightmares far scarier than he could create with actual- Oh yay, what, what fun technology to use. Robotic. These would be his means of keeping his son Michael in the house where he belonged. Oh my god! What? Psychologically torturing his son into staying in the house? So Michael would grow up not only dealing with the memories of his own guilt, the hospital room, the pills, the flowers, the death of his brother, but oh also god. facing literal nightmares. Illusions created by sound. Michael would never forget these either. That is fucked. Straight up fucked. What? <laughs> I knew that there was messed up stuff in Five Nights at Freddy's Law, but... Ah, uh, hot damn. It's like living in eternal torment for it. Michael would never forget these either. Years later, as a security guard, he would still draw pictures of them inside of his law. So he worked all at... Of these extra so it was him working as a security guard there. But all of these yeah, extra I mean, projects... Of emotionally scarred. ...even more. He was an absent father and a non-existent husband, leaving his wife cold and alone. Why do you hide inside your walls? Wow. When there is Guess who doesn't like this? All I see is an empty room. Oh yay, this is lovely and I don't hate it at all. As I kept hoping it would end and be the last line, there kept being more. And despite her repeated demands that he leave his office and engage with the family, he refused time and time again, leaving her no choice but to leave. So he just locked himself and his son in the house? And through it all, there was one lingering feeling. William wasn't done. He had gotten a taste of what it felt like to be unleashed. Yeah, I was what gonna say like he wants to kill again. Charlie's murder had unlocked something in him, and he wanted more. Who's he gonna kill now? Putting on the golden bonnie suit, he lured children one by one to the back room of the pizzeria when no one was looking. At oh first, God. he was cautious. He would lure them with promises of cake and cookies. He told them that their dog had died. He would ask for help with homework. Susie was the first. As I said, would kids go to towards that. I mean, I guess they're there in the pizzeria, which has animatronics, and they might be like, oh, it's one of the animatronics. But I don't know, if an animatronic was trying to lure me into a back room, even as a five-year-old, I think I'd be creeped the shit out. I was going to say it just seems like a flawed plan on his behalf, but I guess it worked. Why the suit, though? Is it just to make everything creepier, or does he resonate with the suit again? Or is it just a simple disguise thing? Ah, it's, it's too much. Susie was the first. You never truly forget your first. Oh. <laughs> So that was with a chica that said that. I remembered that from the quiz. So he killed her and put her in the chica suit? Again, how in the suit? How did they put them in there? It's a big leap from killing a child to managing to stuff their soul into an animatronic suit. How far does his science go? He couldn't sneak out. Someone would see him. He had to hide them in a place where they'd never be found in and the where suits. they'd never leave. In the storage them. suits. They had to be stuffed. Stuffed inside of the suits. No one maintained those things anyway except for him. And so Susie would go into chica. Oh Fritz, God. Jeremy, and Gabriel would come next. But it was easy. It was too easy. And with each little life he snuffed out, his lies got bigger. Their house was burning. They're just being kidnapped. Until the last one where all pretense was off. He let himself get violent. Too violent. I'll just wait for him after school. Throw a bag over his head. Hit him with a shovel. And drag him into the back of my car. Okay. He'd let himself go too far. That one, that one he shouldn't have killed. With no more active animatronics that one, left, he should That one he shouldn't have killed. You know... He shouldn't have killed any of them. That's my take. As I said, the official stance of this channel is don't kill children. 
the body into the one suit that remained backstage, the long forgotten yellow Fred Bear. Now broken, which is the one that his with his son died broken, in? Like Cassidy was broken, like his son was broken. Okay. Newspapers reported on this disappearance. So those the two souls go in there. Children's incident. Police would even charge William with the crimes after finding security footage of the golden mascot suit luring kids to the back, but oh they God. couldn't convict him. They had no bodies, and his face had been hidden behind the mascot suit the entire time. What they had was circumstantial at best. Hate that a lot. So he walked away a free man. But Henry knew the truth. And then he'd also know that he'd killed his daughter. After out of the company and shuttered the doors to the old pizzeria. Henry would keep the franchise quiet for two years. This would not happen again. This could not happen again. How could he protect the kids? So if he shut the doors of the business, which I guess revoked access to the animatronics and the suits, does William Afton keep killing in a different way? And also, are the bodies just left there in the suits and the animatronics? Because if you were closing the business down, wouldn't you go through all the stuff in storage and go, oh, wow, why do these animatronics smell like rotting bodies? Unless he literally just locked everything up and went, great, let's leave it. He would implement an even more extreme security system in the form of new animatronics, toy animatronics, inspired by the toys that they had been selling years ago. But these guys, these were special. They were a new breed of robot with facial recognition abilities. But okay. most importantly, they're all tied into some kind of criminal database so they can detect a predator a mile away. All the right, this is making sense now with the facial recognition stuff. It was time to try once more. The year was 1987 and the new and improved Freddy Fazbear's Pizza was making a head- Right, because in whichever game this was, maybe FNAF 2, I'm not sure, the animatronics were attacking Michael Afton because they mistook him for William Afton with the facial recognition software. Ugh, everything's coming together, y'all. Headlines that just so happened to catch the attention of William Afton. Freddy's was back? And without him? That was his idea. Oh, his man. character. This guy's like unhinged now. No. As long as these restaurants stayed open, William would always come back. Then he noticed the phone number to apply at the bottom of the article. Hundred dollars a week to apply call. Does he Afton send his son? Back. Not as an owner or co-founder. Oh. He would go back in the one place that they would least suspect him. A lowly day shift security guard. Oh, okay. So William Afton goes back as a guard. With the yellow security badge still on his chest, he used his crank to pull open the spring locks. It was time for Bonnie to give an encore performance. Someone used one of the suits. We had a spare in the back, a yellow one. Someone used it. Now none of them are acting right. Uh, oh my god. Of a lockdown, no one is allowed in or out, you know, especially concerning any why did all of the other animatronics start acting strange? Oh, oh. I was about to ask whether it was like all the souls realizing that their killer was there, but we're still in the facial recognition thing, aren't we? So the animatronics with the software are like, he's back! <laughs> 1987, five more kids. Oh my god, no wow. Better. Getting back into the suit after two long years of waiting, or knowing how devastating this would be to Henry the next morning. He didn't even try to hide his crime this time. Five at the same time? Blood on Henry's hands. He'd failed to protect the kids again. The restaurant had only been open for a few weeks, Jesus but William was Christ. sure this would get it to close. Good, if he couldn't have Freddy's, no one would. What the hell, man? And why is, like, William just causing so much collateral damage? He's like, oh, I have this problem with Henry Emily. You know what I'm gonna do? Just kill a bunch of kids. They're not even related to Henry in any way. It just might kind of f up his business. It also might not. Who knows if he'd recover? Just, it, it seems very roundabout and one of those shitty justifications that people make for doing awful things. But as he sat in his bunker, something else started to linger in William's mind. He had seen something strange. The old withered animatronics, they had been wandering around the building, spurred on by the puppet. It was almost like those old robots were trying to save the kids. Save them? They couldn't, obviously, but still, how were they moving? It was almost like they had been given life somehow. Did he have something to do with that? Is it not the AI software that maybe I'm losing track of the timeline? The following day, the news would report a security guard getting bitten by one of the animatronics during the day shift. Was that bite meant for for him? William's curiosity was stronger now than his bloodlust. He had to learn more, but how? There was no way he'd ever be able to get inside another Freddy's pizzeria. Heck, there was practically no way a Freddy's would ever open again. He needed to create something new, something brand new. He needed to create his own pizzeria. Due to the massive success, and even more so Didn't the he already have one Freddy before? Pizza, it was clear that the stage was set, no pun intended, 
for another contender in children's entertainment. But if every location that's been opened up similar to this has just had child murders in them, I don't really think people would take their kids to a new one, especially if they had animatronics that were similar in like any way. Circus Baby's Pizza World. This, this would be the place where he could continue his work. No oh, longer I guess just if they completely changed the style. He needed more kids and he needed them alive. Now, and what? He's fully experimenting with alive kids. He designed a new breed of animatronic. Oh Their God. endoskeleton fluid and flexible. He equipped them with sound lures that could mimic voices. They could what the hell? Them. They could incapacitate and contain them with zero direct input from him. It was brilliant. He was brilliant. But if he opens this location and there's a trend of so many kids reporting that they got like psychologically tortured or attacked or kidnapped, wouldn't he very quickly get shut down? And the characters he chose for this were uniquely his. His new roster wasn't going to be tainted by Henry's disgusting barnyard bird. Oh Instead, God. it was back to his characters. His creations freddy bonnie foxy as well as two special ones oh so this is laura was an oh. homage to i was about to say oh so the animatronics for the first one and then there was just a whole brand new one the second the titular baby was designed oh, with his baby in mind elizabeth his youngest child she would always be daddy's little girl wait elizabeth the one that obeyed until the That's day that she didn't daddy why won't you let me play with her she's so pretty and shiny didn't you make her just for me I don't... Has... Has... Has this child been mentioned before? There is so much going on. My brain is trying. I'm trying my best. The day before a circus baby's pizza world opened, she disobeyed. She didn't listen. Okay. Left alone with baby, she got too close. The animatronic ripped in half and swallowed her whole. What? Scared and confused what? Fading into eternal darkness. By the time Afton found her, it was too late. She was gone. How? If he didn't want that to happen, why did he make it so the animatronic could do that? It seems like a simple solution. If you don't want your child to be swallowed whole by an animatronic that you created specifically to like be her friend, then maybe don't make it so that animatronic could just like eat her alive. Seems like an unnecessary function to me. Under the guise of a gas leak. But wait, as he sat there at the foot of the stage, he noticed that something was different. So the eye color another of the child is changed. dead. Baby had been built with blue eyes, but now they were emerald green, the same color as Elizabeth's. Was she in there? Could this all be connected to the free moving animatronics that he had seen at Freddy's? I guess I assumed that he actively put their souls in them somehow, but I'm assuming it's more of like a paranormal thing where the souls just got imbued there because of their awful death. But maybe after he analyzes it, he finds a way to be able to continue doing it. 1993. Pathetic. This place was pathetic. Henry had clearly tried to reopen one final time with those old original animatronics from so long ago, but William's damage to the brand had been permanent. I kind of feel bad for Henry Emily. One night, then another, then another. William repeatedly snuck into the old broken restaurant to lure the living animatronics oh my God. to him, one by one dismantling them. I thought he might have been trying to take the suits that had the bodies in them. The metal had to be the secret. It had to contain the remnants of life itself, but he had to know for sure. Leaping out of a room that was invisible to the animatronics programming, he dragged the oversized robotic skeletons back to his underground workshop. Back to where Circus Baby watched on with glowing, curious eyes. Oh my god, eyes the other one's watching. Felt alive. And he's just fine working next to that. Endoskeletons reduced down to one silvery puddle of goo. Could he transfer this living metal to his own creations? He had to try. He picked up a syringe and filled it with the molten metal and injected the goo into Funtime Freddy's twisted, wiry endoskeleton. Okay. Suddenly, the coils came to life. This dude just does whatever he wants. He'd done it. He had unlocked the secret to life itself, except something was clearly wrong. But it's the metal? Like, what is special about the specific metal they used? And if it is special and has the power of life itself, why isn't, like, everything in the world that uses that metal alive or just consuming souls? They were erratic. They were violent, angry. Baby didn't act this way. She had been calm, collected. This was clearly something else, something mindless and frantic. Perhaps by mixing the souls and then portioning them out he had created incomplete beasts god keep that's her oh my god that's so depressing as he searched the old pizzeria one more time for any remaining scraps of metal the ghosts attacked his past the ghosts to collect their due all led by cassidy the five lined up and blocked the door and afton's mind reeled Wait, the how scientific did the ghosts implications of this were incredible ghosts real ghosts that he could see all standing against him but 
What could they do? What couldn't they do? He panicked as Cassidy approached. How do you stop something that's already dead? Yeah, Maybe I mean, that would the be thing just that resulted horrifying. In death in the first place. He would get into his suit like old times. He would regain his power over them just hmm. the day that Wow. They he was the genius. He was the one in the suit. He was the one oh, in gonna, charge. So gonna die, right? The spring lock snapped into place. Maybe it was this frantic Oh. Moment. Maybe it was the leaky abandoned restaurant. Maybe it was just He dies in the suit? Do. He didn't know. The only thing he did know was that his brain was suddenly filled with searing white hot pain as hundreds of metallic pins and gears stabbed into his body from all sides. Oh all God. he could do was collapse, blood slowly oozing out of the suit and pooling onto the floor around him. Well, that's quite a death, isn't it? I'm guessing that because of his horrific violent end, he's going to end up being fused with the suit. Oof. It couldn't end like this. It wouldn't end like this. His work was unfinished. Unable to move, his only option was to survive, to live to keep living. It took days lying in his own blood, but eventually days. He found him. A security guard making a normal report. When he saw the animatronics torn apart in the middle of the- <sighs> That would be a horrible sight. File an immediate report of a break-in. An owner would have to come in and claim the damage. Oh God, Henry? Than, Henry. Oh boy. In Afton's heart. Henry would see him. They were partners after all. He would be the one to help- No, him. he knows you killed his daughter. Relieve him from this tremendous pain. Henry entered the secret room. His eyes fell on Afton sitting there in the pool of- Does red. he know it's it's Afton? Saying nothing, turned and walked away. <laughs> Valid, to be fair. Like, I would turn my back on him too. To inform all employees that due to budget restrictions, the previously mentioned safe rooms are being sealed at most locations. Does he seal him in? Being taken out beforehand, so if you left anything oh inside, then it's your own fault. Management also requests <laughs> that this room not be mentioned to family, friends, Okay, so he literally just leaves him in. Okay, well that's something. For thirty years, trapped behind thirty walls years, with iron will that refused to die. End of this part. I say this part because it's not officially the end of the Afton era just yet, but this just felt like a really solid stopping point, and the episode has gone on forever. I know that he's like an awful, awful person that's done a whole lot of horrible things, but good. Lord, that is quite a hellish end. I'm trying to even fathom what it would be like, and I am good with not, actually. Most of this is things that we already knew, stuff that's been established and re-established time and time again by the games. That said, there are two things that I absolutely have to address. Okay. The first and biggest is the placement of sister location, or more specifically, Elizabeth's death. To me, evidence in games seems to suggest that it was meant to come before the crying child's death in 1983. Oh. The biggest clue to this is that the crying child saw something. Remember what you saw is the phrase that's repeated over and over again by psychic friend Fred Bear, aka okay. William Afton speaking through a walkie-talkie in the Fred Bear plushie's stomach. But what did he see? In the stomach? Okay, that was a detail I missed. Uh, oh, that makes that even more horrifying. And I guess that order would also make sense given that I don't think the daughter was mentioned before. I think we can tell based on how the nightmare animatronics are visualized. They have mouths in their stomachs, just God. like baby ripping in half at the waist right. to swallow yeah. a kid. Again, just don't make that feature. And lastly, it explains why he's scared, and more specifically, why Afton wants him scared. He needs his kids to stay away from the animatronics. He doesn't want them getting too close, because the last time one of his kids got too close to a robot, his daughter died. I mean, maybe I'm just naive and hopeful, but couldn't you just talk to him. At least to Michael, he clearly seems to be the older child. Like, couldn't you essentially just sit him down and say, hey, I had a daughter before. Here's what happened to her, so please be very careful and don't go near the animatronics because I don't want you to get hurt either. You don't have to spend years putting your children through psychological torture to keep them away. The death of Elizabeth also gives William Afton extra motivation for killing. He's a grieving father. Oh, His daughter was taken away from him, so Charlie should die as well. He's lashing out at the world after losing his kids. And again, we know that at least one of his children had to have died prior to Charlie's death, based on the mound of dirt that we see in Midnight Motorist. Right. The little grave mound. Basically, Elizabeth dying first has everything it needs to fit, except for the most important thing, the murder weapon. Why would Afton be building an animatronic with a giant claw in its stomach? That's what I've been saying! At this point, he just has no motive. It just doesn't make sense prior to 1983. At this point in the story, he hasn't killed anyone. And we know for a fact that the missing children's incident is 19... Is there an answer for this? Elizabeth's death coming before 
any of those events just doesn't work. Hence why I placed it where I did in the narrative timeline. Right. Afton's death here is also a bit tricky. We know that he returned to the FNAF 1 location to break down the original animatronics in order to harvest their remnant. We know that he melts down five things to become one thing. Candy Cadet makes that very clear. So the five okay. things are the five endoskeletons from the various animatronics. That would be totally fine if it weren't for one huge- I was about to say, I'm totally following all this makes sense, I'm on board, and then he's like, that'd be fine except for one problem. I feel like as soon as I grasp something, there is more conjecture. On his fifth visit to the pizzeria, Afton gets springlocked. So right. either the five becoming one starts in 1993, but then finishes 30 years later when he re-emerges from the wall to add the last endoskeleton to his pile, oh or he's had himself some reason to return to the original location after harvesting all the stuff that he can. It's not ideal, but it's the one angle that makes the most sense. That How would he be moving out of there, of there in that? Leaving us with five more games to cover and another 40 plus years of Fazbear That's history. That's so, so much put it that way. Anyway, until then, my Faz heads, congratulations. You've made it through a massive <laughs> upload. Okay. Well, you know what the funny thing is? The end result of all of this is that while I've been sitting here begging, being like, tell me, tell me what happened. Tell me why I often killed kids. Tell me all of the details. Now that I've heard, I'm like, nope, no thanks. I'm good. I didn't need to delve into that. I did anyway. And it's, uh, yeah, truly nightmarish. So thanks for that. Thank you for suggesting I watch it. That was a lot. <laughs> oh no, it's one of those videos that end with just me being absolutely shook. <laughs> I'll end it now before things get too weird. Let me know if you'd like me to do part three. I'm probably just gonna do it anyway, regardless. Even if all of you commented saying, no, don't do part three, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Why do I get aggressive? I hope you have a lovely time until I see you next. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you being here. See ya. <laughs> uh.